This is a quick tips and tricks video on how to set up an internal or thin wall boundary condition in CFX CFD simulation. In a previous video I looked at the topology that was required um, and how to set that up in space claim and if you remember we basically need an interface between two fluid volumes and uh, we want to turn the shared topology to merge so that we ensure a nice one-to-one -one node connection between those volumes. So here we have a duct and if I highlight one of these volumes you can see the uh, circles that represent holes in a baffle plate in the middle of the duct uh, and it's the uh, area outside of the holes that we want to turn into a internal wall boundary condition without modeling the thickness of the actual plate itself. Um, so I've gone ahead and created the mesh, uh, we've got a nice one-to-one -one connection and I've also gone ahead and made some name selections for our boundary conditions. Uh, I've got an inlet at one end that I show there, I've got an outlet at the other end and in the middle, if I just go ahead and hide one of these bodies, I've selected that surface that's going to be our baffle plate or our wall boundary condition in the middle. Okay. Um, so show all bodies. Uh, and if we go ahead and open that up into CFX, by default, uh, CFX will throw the mesh into a single fluid volume. So we've got our default domain. And it'll also put every uh, external surface into a boundary condition, which is by default a wall. So we see that uh, default boundary condition. And if I click on that, you'll see it's all highlighted. And you may be able to see internally, there's no mesh highlighted for that uh, interface. So that means that fluid can actually pass through it as it stands. To see it a bit clearer, we'll go ahead and create a boundary condition, our, our inlet. So let's just set up a quick inlet here. Uh, and we'll use our inlet name selection. Um, just give it a dummy value there. And similarly, we'll set up a uh, outlet. Oh, if I can spell correctly, outlet. And OK. And again, we'll use our name selection of outlet and zero pressure. OK. Uh, and that'll have taken those two surfaces out of our default wall boundary condition. So if I highlight that, you can see just the external walls that are, or, or surfaces that are highlighted. So what we actually want to do is apply a wall boundary condition to this internal face. So we could do it two ways. You'll not remember I created the uh, name selection, so I can simply do the same thing as I did for making an in and an outlet. I can just say a right mouse button, insert a boundary, we'll call it baffle wall, for example, and say OK. Uh, we change the type from uh, inlet to wall, and we Pull, use the pull down menu for the location and we select that baffle plate here uh, and we say OK and there we have our internal wall. So if I click on default domain it's not in there but if I click on baffle wall we've got our wall boundary condition and we've got our inlet and outlet. Now what happens if I'd forgotten to name that in the name selection? This is where CFX differs very slightly from Fluent. If you've seen the Fluent video you'll know that uh, the holes and the baffle plate all get bundled into one single internal boundary condition and we can't really manipulate it or do much with it. Um, we have a little trick in CFX that we can. So if I delete that boundary condition there, um, so now we've got our back to our status quo, we've got our default wall around the outside, we've got our inlet one end, our outlet the other end, um, and we've forgotten to name um, this internal plate. What we can do is come up to our connectivity section here we can do a right mouse button and show all one-to-one -one connections. So that shows our one-to-one -one interfaces between the two volumes. And if we click on them, it's listing all the holes. And somewhere down the list, we should find our um, plate surface that we want to block flow with. Uh, keep going down, and there it is. Uh, and what I do is I come over here, and then this shows the one-to-one the -one interface. I use the right mouse button, and I can actually delete that interface and by deleting it, it then throws that surface into our default wall boundary condition. So if I click on this and highlight it now, you'll notice that that uh, surface is now part of our default wall boundary condition and will be uh, blocking flow uh, while the holes still allow flow to go through. So that's two ways of setting up an internal or thin wall boundary condition within CFX. We can either use the name selection and just apply a direct boundary condition, or we can list our one-to-one -one connections and delete any connection that we want to turn into a wall.